Welcome to A Time in the Word. Hey, my name is Pastor Chris Sakai. Hey, it's awesome to be with you guys today. So today on the podcast, we are going to be talking about faith that really works, or maybe we'll call it faith that actually works, faith that gets the, the job done. We're, we're working on it. But we want to talk about faith that, that really works, not an idea, not a concept, but a faith that actually produces tangible results. And so this is the kind of faith that God wants us to have. So I just want to welcome everyone who who are listening on our uh, um, 90.1 FM, The Point, and 104.9 FM, The Point, and also on our YouTube platform, if you're watching it there. Uh, greetings, just glad you guys are with us. So again, faith that really works, faith that gets the job done for real. And so we're going to compare two different guys from the Bible, and we're going to kind of talk about their faith. And then in this, we want to examine our own hearts. We want to examine our own faith. Do we have the faith like Thomas, uh, the disciple of Jesus in the Bible, do we have that faith that we read about in John chapter 20, or do we have the faith that we read about in the book of Genesis that Abraham had? And so we're going to kind of compare those two. And one faith is based on sight. One faith is based on believing the word of God, and and which and we're going to see how the results are different. So we're going to go ahead and read um, in. In John chapter 20, and this is right after you know, Jesus has been crucified on the cross, and you know, the disciples had all scattered. The only one that remained was, you know, John, and so he was there uh, uh, with them. And, and so after he, Jesus had rose from the dead three days later, he spent some time going around and talking to the disciples. The Bible actually said he went and visited about 500 people. And I kind of find that interesting because actually when we get into the book of Acts in the upper room and in Acts chapter um, Acts chapter 2, there were 120 people in the upper room praying and waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. So Jesus, who rose from the dead and was walking through walls and doing all these miracles, presented himself to 500 people. And with that type of miracle, only 120 people were obedient and went into the upper room to wait on the coming of the Holy Spirit. You know, that kind of speaks sometimes. We wonder, like, how can certain people not believe? Like, what's it going to take for this guy to actually get it? And, I mean, here's the reality of it, is Jesus who was in his resurrected body, breaking the laws of physics, walking through walls, doing all these different things. Only out of the 500, only 120 people were obedient. And so it just comes to show the condition of of the human heart. And that even with the presentation of very awesome and practical miracles. Faith is still required for a person to walk successfully uh, in in um, in Christianity to to see results to to get the job done, and so that's the faith that we want to instill in inside of you. So let me see here. We're in John chapter twenty. Where are we at here? Uh, verse twenty four, and so it says now Thomas called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So Jesus had come and done some things with some of the other disciples, but Thomas wasn't there. He was off doing something else. It says in verse 25, the other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. So he said to them, unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my fingers into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the door being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace to you. So Jesus walks through the wall, you know, and uh, there he's with us, peace to you guys. And then he says, then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hand and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believe. And Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord, my God. 
Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen, yet have believed. And so this is why we get the, the phrase, doubting Thomas. And here, you know, poor Thomas, you know, he's, um, you know, he, he, this goes with them, you know, and this was just one moment in time. Again, Thomas was an apostle of Jesus, did great things for the Lord and for the kingdom of God. But I like how the Bible will show the disciples at their weakest points, because that thing is encouraging to me, because I know when there is what I'm at my weakest point, where God has redeemed me and grown me and, you know, hadn't given up on me and propelled me forward uh, in, the, in the faith. But, and also I just want to point out here is that the disciples had said, we have seen Jesus. Again, all of them were in the same boat. They believed because they saw. And Jesus, and Thomas is the one though that gets, you know, because he, he gets made the example, but they are all in the same boat. They all believe because they saw. And so Jesus says, blessed are those who have seen and yet have believed. And so this is, this is what he's, he is what he's challenging for us is to not have our faith based on what we've seen. So let me give you an example. You know, people are like, well, I'm praying for something. You know, I'm believing God for whatever miracle, whatever provision, whatever breakthrough you're praying for. And I will believe God when, when I have it. Okay. When I feel it, when I, when I see it, but this is not what the Bible teaches us. This is not how it teaches uh, faith works. Let me read you a verse here in, in Mark chapter 11, beginning in verse 22, Jesus teaches, he says, have faith in God. For assuredly, now let's, for, first he says, verily, verily, this is important, guys, listen up, okay? He's, this, is, this is serious. I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. And so he's, listen, you confess with your mouth what you are believing God for and don't doubt, and you're going to have it. He says, you got to believe it. You begin to thank God you believe before you even receive it. I'll, he concludes this in verse 24. He says, therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask or whatever things you crave when you pray, believe that you've received them and then you will have them. So you've got to believe that you've received something and then you'll, you'll have it. You know, I like the example. I've used it before. Um, I heard, heard a preacher uh, say one time using... Uh, Faith is similar as to ordering something on Amazon.com. When I have Amazon Prime and I click buy now, you know, I have faith that I'm going to get that package. But I don't start doubting and fretting and don't believe that it's mine uh, until it shows up on my doorstep. You know, if I don't see it, you know, in a couple hours or even the next day, I'm not like, oh my gosh, let me cancel my package. It's not going to happen. I doubt. I don't believe. No. I have faith in Amazon.com that they are going to ship their package and stick it on my porch just as they promised because Amazon is faithful according to, you know, what it says it's going to do as far as delivering stuff. And so if I can have that faith in a company here on earth, how much more faith should I have in the word of God that I can believe those things I say I have? So i I need to begin to thank God when I'm praying. If I'm believing God for my loved one to be saved, if you're believing for your husband to be saved, your wife to be saved, your children to be saved, you should be thanking God every day for their salvation. Believe that it's yours. Even before you see any change, you begin to treat them that way. You begin to thank God that way. You expect it. When you're believing for you know, a miracle in your life, you're believing for healing. Healing is a promise in the Bible, but you're like, I still feel sick. Listen, you need to put your feelings in check. I walk by faith, not by sight. I believe that the word of God is true. So I believe that healing is mine. Now, I don't deny the feelings are there. I don't deny the symptoms are there. Don't get me wrong. We're not, we're not pretending. But we believe and we deny its right to be in our body. And so we believe that healing is ours. And because we believe healing is ours, we thank God for our healing, believing that we've received it, then we'll have it. So I thank God for, for the healing even before the symptoms leave my body. 
Does that make sense? And so we're believing that way. So let's look. So, so, so a lot of people are like doubting Thomas. You know, they, they believe once they see it, once they, they feel it. You know, if I'm praying for something, I'm praying for peace. And, you know, I'm, I'm going through something, I pray for peace. I don't believe that I have that peace until my feelings change. He says, don't be that way. You start thanking God because the word of God is true. You believe that peace is already yours. When you begin to thank God, that peace comes. So let's talk about the other example. We're going to, let's go put, turn into uh, the book of Romans and we're going to look at, uh, um, at Abraham. Okay. Let's see what the author writes here um, about Abraham when it comes to, when it comes to, whoops. When it comes to the second kind of faith. So we're going to be in at Romans chapter 4. And we're going to be in verse 17. And talking about Abraham. It says. He believed God. And you can put a period. An exclamation point. Underline it. Put it in bold. Okay this is where we, this is where we want to be. It doesn't matter what, what it is. If God's promised you something. If the word of God says it is true. Believe God. Period. And he says, he believed God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. This, he understood. This is the kind of God he served. Oh, you know, I, Pastor, I can't believe for it. It's, it's already dead. You know, listen, God is in the business of resurrecting people. I mean, Jesus is proof. I think all the, Lazarus, God is in the business of raising the dead. You know, can these, can these dry bones live? You know, the, you know, the prophet's like, Lord, you knowest, you know, he's like, I'm not going to let any doubt come out of my mouth. And he's, and, and, and those, those dead bones come back together and, and come alive. And so he says, and, and he says, and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. So God calls what doesn't exist in the natural and makes it, uh, brings it from the supernatural into the natural. You know, Hebrews 11, 1, you know, faith, you know, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So something in the natural that doesn't exist, you know, faith takes what is real in the supernatural and gives it substance here in the natural, in the natural realm. I believe that it is true, and then it will be. It says, who, uh, who contrary to hope, in hope believed. All right, so it's not like I, I, I wish for it to happen. I hope it's going to happen one day. Faith is right now. I believe it's not mine one day. It's mine now. Hope is future tense. Faith is present tense. Faith is right now. What I'm believing God for in the future, I believe that it is mine now, is what he's saying here. So who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be, and not being weak in faith, and did not consider his own body already dead, since he was about a hundred years old and and the deadness of Sarah's womb, he did. So he's a hundred. You know, he's promised to be a father of many nations. Doesn't have any kids. He's a hundred years old, and his wife is is ninety. And he says he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. I love this. He did not waver in the promise of God through unbelief. He didn't waste his time with unbelief. He said, but was strengthened in faith. You know, the Bible says, don't let the weak say I am weak. Don't let the sick say I am sick. Don't let the depressed say I am, I am depressed. He says, let the weak say I am strong. My strength is in the Lord. And so he says, but with strength and faith, giving glory to God. He says, God, you get all the glory. I'm not doing any of this on my own. Faith says, I don't, I'm not doing it. God, this is all you doing this. And he says, and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. So Abraham was fully convinced. If God says it's true, if God says he's going to do something, I know that he's able to do it. No matter how big, how far-fetched it may seem in the natural he believed it so. This is the kind of faith when God told him to um, sacrifice Isaac. You know, he believed that God was either going to stop him or, or he was going to raise his son from the dead because he believed in the promise that Isaac was going to uh, carry his line that he had promised and become father of many nations. So listen, I want to thank you uh, for joining us. I want to encourage you today, choose to walk in Abraham's faith and don't just be satisfied with mediocre Thomas faith. 
A amen? And so if you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, I want you to do that right now. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus to the earth to die on the cross to forgive me of my sins. I believe you paid it all in full on the cross. You, you took care of it all. I repent of my sins and I confess that you are the Lord of my life. I thank you that I choose to leave now the family of darkness and come fully into the family of light. Father, I give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, listen, if you said that prayer, the Bible says the angels of heaven are rejoicing. This preacher's rejoicing with you. And I want to encourage you to join a good uh, Bible-believing, faith-teaching church. Um, and if you live in the Winchester, Frederick County area, I want to encourage you to come to Spirit and Word Fellowship. We're at 1275 Tasker Road in Stephen City, Virginia. Join us Sundays at 1030. Hey, love you guys. God bless you. Have a great rest of your week.